You're doing great, kitty. One week old today. Your name's Lucky. You survived. So this is how a clutch works. And it's pretty much the same for just about any car. Except Volkswagen looks and acts a little different. But they're still pretty much the same. So a clutch on a car, a tractor, a heavy truck, just about anything except a motorcycle or an off-road vehicle looks just like this. There's four parts to the system. This is called the pressure plate, the friction disc, and the flywheel. The part on the crankshaft that's made out of heavy cast iron that spins around. And the thrust or release bearing. They come in all different sizes. And that's the smallest one. It's from Volkswagen. First, the flywheel. The flywheel consists of a steel ring gear that was heat shrunk onto the cast iron flywheel disc. This part's called the machine surface, where the friction part of the clutch grips it just like a brake rotor. And the center part is called the pilot bearing. Not all vehicles have a pilot bearing. Some just have a hole there and nothing actually even goes in the hole. This is a Honda one and it actually has a bearing. The friction disc has a hole with several splines in it. Has four damper springs. And like disc brake material on both sides. Some rivets to hold it on. The pressure plate consists of the body, the pressure fingers, the friction plate and a couple of metal straps which attach this into here and here but allow it to move up and down and still allow this to drive this plate. Your release bearing usually has fingers on it. This one has fingers with like a slot and your arm that sticks out of the side of the transmission has two fingers on it and a long arm going this way and it either uses a cable to pivot the arm when you push on the clutch pedal or it uses a hydraulic slave cylinder that works like a braking system on a car and that has a little piston which pushes back here and can move this part in and out against the clutch fingers. So when I flip this bearing over you can see that the center part is the bearing part and this part remains stationary. It doesn't spin but it does move up and down only about a quarter inch. If you have your clutch pedal adjusted wrongly, so there's no slack in your clutch pedal, there's always pressure pushing on this bearing on those clutch fingers. Well, that doesn't do anything right away, but eventually it'll wear that bearing out and you'll have a very loud bearing that howls all the time. If this bearing ever goes bad and seizes up, your clutch will still function, except that every time you use the bearing and it pushes on the fingers, it wears on the fingers and it can actually wear off where you see those little wear marks all the metal and go right through the fingers and not deactivate your clutch. This is a new bearing and it feels very good. It feels like there's sticky grease in there and it doesn't spin freely and make like a little bearing noise if you twirl it like that. A worn one spins freely and that's not good. Here's a worn one. You can see all the little finger impressions in it. Line up with those marks. And it's actually hard to spin it's almost impossible. It's, it's this one's seizing up. This Volkswagen one's quite different. There is little bearings in underneath that pocket that sit between two metal plates. This goes in the opposite end of the transmission and sits about 18 inches away from the pressure plate and the clutch. On a Volkswagen, there's an active the, the activator that pushes on this is at the back of the transmission. That's when you push your clutch pedal. So it pushes this rod downwards, goes all the way through the center drive shaft of the transmission, and then pushes on a plate. Sometimes on Volkswagen transmissions, just one day you're driving along, you push the clutch, this thing pushes down like it's supposed to, then all of a sudden your foot goes to the floor on the pedal, and you can't disengage your clutch. The plate that this end pushes on actually sometimes can wear a hole right through, and this part, go, this part goes right through the, push, the pressure plate. And that's not good. You've got to take your transmission off and change your pressure plate and your clutch. So how this works. Each finger is like a lever 
the pivot point is right there, or the fulcrum. Every time you depress the clutch pedal, it pushes on these fingers and lifts up the opposite part of the fingers, then releasing the pressure on the drive plate. Right now this drive plate's almost level with the mounting surface. But when the clutch is fully depressed and those fingers are moved this way, this pressure plate can move almost a quarter inch. When it moves back, it stops squeezing the friction disc between the two shiny surfaces. The reason why there's four little springs there is to prevent chatter, which is like this sort of jumping and vibrating when you're starting to engage the clutch. Chatter causes uneven wear, and you'll see that sometimes on worn clutches, and little shadowy parts on here and on both surfaces. If you get these uh, pressure plates rebuilt, they regrind this surface, and on the flywheel, they regrind this surface. If you're doing your clutch and the flywheel looks still actually quite smooth and you run your fingers on it and it doesn't have lines on it and there's not too much chatter indentations, you actually don't need to get it remachined. If this surface is very shiny and polished, your clutch will ask, actually last longer before it wears out than a new machine surface because a new machine surface actually causes more friction and wears your, and wears your friction material down quicker. On a worn out clutch, all these little grooves start to disappear. They're not very deep in the first place. And everything looks smooth all the way around. And usually it's just starting to touch those rivets. That's when your clutch starts to slip. This clutch is about 50% worn. They don't have a whole lot more material on them when they're new. They're not like brake pads. There's maybe one more millimeter on this side and one more millimeter on that side. And the total depth of these little wear grooves is actually not much more than a little more than a millimeter. If you have a car that when you push the clutch pedal in and you try to put it in first gear and take off, it doesn't want to go in first gear, it just sort of grinds and fights you back. But when you turn the key off and push the clutch and try to put it in first gear and it goes in perfectly easy, well then I'm, you may have some of these problems I'm going to discuss. Sometimes but rarely these fingers get bent and some stay down a little bit and so when you push this, it doesn't engage them and release them. That causes one side of the pressure plate to be dragging on the clutch disc, and that's causing the whole mechanism to be turning, which is in here, that spine part, and be driving your transmission a little bit even when your clutch is pushed, and that's why when you try to engage it into first gear, it doesn't want to go in until the motor's not turning. Also, one or two or more of the fingers can break off, sometimes getting lodged in here and causing a little bit of vibration because it makes the engine a slight bit off balance. And when that happens too, and your release bearing pushes on it, it's not releasing your pressure disc all the way. And anyways, and your clutch drags and it's hard to put in gear. And your clutch drags and it's hard to put in gear. Very common on cars with the hydraulic clutch release is the master and slave system leaks and gets air in it or it's low on fluid so when you depress the clutch your release bearing isn't pushing down far enough and that's not causing your clutch to release all the way causing the same problem also the master cylinder which is firewall mounted, mounted that sends the fluid down to activate this thing it can be losing pressure and causing your clutch not to fully disengage so there's all the reasons why you can't get it into gear unless you put it into gear first and then start the car. Nowadays most new clutch kits come with a new pressure plate, a new friction disc, and a new release bearing. The Lucky kits even come with a plastic tool that fits right down that hole and has another end on it that fits into there. That makes reassembly and lining up the friction disc to the center of everything very easy. If you don't have one of those alignment tools before you put the transmission back on, I'm very good at doing it with eye. As you can see, the very bottom pilot hole isn't in line with the hole in the friction disc. But if you put in all the pressure plate bolts in finger tight and take a flat screwdriver and shove between the space, you can move that friction disc and line it up.
just like I did there in that position. And if you close one eye and look straight down there and get the two circles perfectly concentric in line, you can actually line up your clutch disc without any tools or any special you know, procedure. Once that's done, just tighten up all the peripheral bolts till they're very tightened. And there's no gap here on the pressure plate. Another way to center your friction disc in the middle of everything is to find a handy spot on the edge of the pressure plate and stick your handy dandy vernier tool in and set the depth till it touches the friction disc and then keep going around and measuring from the outside while that's on there loosely until you get the same depth all the way around and that will cause your hole in the middle to line up. It's always a good idea to put a little bit of grease on these splines too when you assemble it because this part moves up and down and slides along the splines of the input shaft of the transmission and you don't want it to cause too much wear there. When you have a worn out when you have a worn out clutch plate, the pressure plate, when you're reassembling or just taking it apart, you'll notice pretty much no gap there. This one has about an eighth of an inch gap because it's half worn. But if you reassemble this with a new friction disc, put your pressure plate back on and check the distance, it's almost a quarter inch. So that's a way of just showing yourself what a worn clutch and not worn clutch looks like when you're working on engines. When trying to slip your transmission back on, if you believe everything's lined up and everything's tightened down properly, it often, often the input shaft just doesn't want to go in that hole too easy. Well, what you do is you put your car into gear, doesn't matter what gear you put it in, make sure the wheels of the car are touching the ground so they can't move, and then rotate the pulley on the front of the engine slowly, doesn't matter how much or which direction, while someone else is picking up the transmission and trying to wiggle it on and line it in place and that will slowly rotate this mechanism the input shaft of the transmission will be held and stopped from moving because the car is in gear and eventually it will just click and fall into those holes and everything will be fine. Never ever tighten the transmission mounting bolts to the engine block until the transmission easily falls all the way into position and touches the two surfaces, transmission to engine block, without any effort by hand. If there's any space that it doesn't want to squeeze, and you're tightening those bolts down and trying to force it, you're going to screw something up there. One day, if you're just driving along, and your clutch pedal feels normal, and everything else in your car feels normal, but all of a sudden, it's like you have no clutch, your car doesn't, you know, want to drive the transmission, sometimes these things disintegrate and all this friction material just flies off into little chunks and you have nothing but a little metal plate in there that's not touching anything. This doesn't happen very often. I've even seen the odd new clutch do that. What usually causes this is on a previous day or the same day someone was racing with the car and burning the clutch somewhat and slipping it and trying to do hard takeoffs and the clutch was smoking and this stuff got cooked then when you use it short time later, it just all blows up and lets go when the revs get high. Not good. So changing the clutch part is actually quite easy. And it's not actually very hard to line them up either, even without a plastic dummy tool. The hard part is, of course, taking the transmission off and on. And the last hard part is actually getting the transmission back on and sort of rotating the engine a little bit at the same time so it all goes clunks and drops together. In Canada, the three parts you get in your average new clutch kit cost $179 to about $400. Not a big deal. The labor is the costly part if you can't do it yourself. And one final thing. If you look at your friction disc, one part sticks out higher than the other part. The higher part always goes away from the flywheel and sits in this pocket of the pressure plate. Yeah, sure you can put it on the wrong way. You might not even notice till you start tightening the screws down around this. Then it's going to crush your new clutch disc and destroy it.
terrible.